Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday morning, and I am so happy we have the opportunity to be together and to study a little bit more of the life of David. As you remember, we are on lesson number eight, and the title is The Humble Exalted. We're going to be studying the topic for Tuesday, Graciousness Towards Enemy. Before we start, you can pause your video now if you haven't um, picked up your Bible yet, but do do get your Bible and follow along with the verses that we're going to be reading in 2 Samuel. And let's also ask the Lord to be with us and to guide us in the study of His Word. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to be with us and to guide us and to give us wisdom to understand your Word. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. So this morning, we're going to be seeing graciousness towards enemy. We remember what happened at the beginning of this lesson. We saw how Saul went to consult a witch and was told that he was going to, in fact, die in battle. And that the battle came as a lack of his leadership in taking care of his kingdom. He was so busy taking care of one man that he saw as a threat for his ability to be a king and he lost the whole the whole kingdom and we also saw which was the most important part i think so far how david reacted to his death he was his enemy but david was very sad to see him go and his um, grief was sincere and was deep and also focused on the good things of the life of saul especially in the fact that he had given life to Jonathan, right? He was his son, so, um, and that was a good thing for David. So let's see now how it, the story continues. Relate David's activity after his period of mourning. And we're going to look in 2 Samuel chapter 2. We're going to be reading verse 1 through 7. And... Um, it says, And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David asked, Whither shall I go? And he said, Unto Hebron. And the verses continue to say that they, he and his two wives and his men and their family went on to live in the cities of Hebron. And there also the people... Um, of Judah came and they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they also told David who were the people that had um, taken the body of Saul, which the Philistines had taken and had hung. After beheading them, they had hung their body um, to show off. And so this people went and they took him the bodies down and they gave him burial. And David was so impressed by them. In verse 5 it says, And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that ye have shown this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you. And I also will require you this kindness, because you have done this thing. So he also said, now please show this kindness also to me as your new king. Therefore now let your hands be strengthened and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead. And I also, the house of Judah, have anointed me king over them. So we see that um, David was impressed and he was grateful for the kindness of this man. And one thing to notice is that David required of the Lord what he should do. Before he moved, he asked the Lord where he should go. And the Lord was the one that led him to Hebron. Now let's continue with the story. And we're going to look at verse 8 through 11. And the, the question is, who was Abner? And how did he cause David problem? And verse 8 of the same chapter 2 of 2 Samuel says, But Abner, the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanai, and made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, 
and over Benjamin and over all Israel. And so it continues that Ishbosheth Saul's son was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel and reigned two years, but the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king of Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. And Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahain and Gibeon. And so for seven years and six months, there was trouble because Abner, the captain of Saul, decided that he was going to put someone else as the king. The, the note here says the circumstances under which Abner was placed to serve, serve to develop his real character and show him to be an ambitious and unprincipled man. He had been intimately associated with Saul and had been influenced by the spirit of the king to despise the man whom God had chosen to reign over Israel. And his hatred had been increased by the cutting rebuke that David had given him at the time when the cross of water and the spear of the king had been taken from the side of Saul as he slept in the camp. So we see that Abner was the captain of Saul's army. And he, by being the captain, was given the chance to show his true colors. And he was an ambitious and unprincipled man. And he despised David just as much as Saul had. He had the same spirit. Um, and that hatred had grown from the fact that David at one point had been able to get so close to the king as to take his bottle of water and his spear. And of course, Abner as a captain was supposed to be protecting Saul, but he had fallen asleep in his job. And so David had rebuked him for not doing his job. And that had increased his hatred against David. And he caused problems for David for seven years and six months. How was the throne settled finally? And how did David touch the hearts of Israel by his nobility towards another who had been a foe? And so we have chapter 3, verse 1. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And verse 30 to 37 of the same chapter 3 says... So Joab and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner because he had slain their brother, Ashael, at Gibeon in the battle. So how did this problem end? Well, because Joab, who was the captain of the army of David, killed Abner for killing his brother during battle. And how did David react and David said to Joab and to all the people that were with him, Rent your clothes and gird you with sackcloths and mourn before Abner. And the king David himself followed the buyer. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. Not only did he weep, he also continues on the verse that he um would not eat the whole day until the end of the day. And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also if I taste bread, or aught else, till the sun be down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day, that it was not of the king to slay Abner, the son of Ner. So here we see again that this was settled because Abner was killed, but it was not because David desired that he be killed. David had nothing to do with it, and he demonstrated it by showing his um, sadness at what had happened, his disapproval, and by not eating all day.
and the people approved that of uh, his actions. It says, David, magnanimous recognition of the one who had been his bitter enemy, won the confidence and the admiration of all Israel. How did David react to the actions of some who wished to gain his favor by slaying Saul's son, Ishbosheth, his potential rival? Chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. So, and the sons of Rimon came to the house of Ishbosheth, and they killed him in his bed. And we are told on verse 9 to 12, and David answered, Rechab and Bana, his brother, the sons of Rimon, the Barotite, and so, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, and they said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who had redeemed my soul out of all adversities. When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I told him, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed? Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulcher of Abner in Hebron. A little bit um, graphic, but we see here that David did not approve of the people that went there and decided to take it upon their hands and to kill the last son of uh, Saul to secure David's kingdom. The same Lord that had protected him was the one to give him the kingdom. He did not need to incur into killing of those people. And so he rewarded them with, um, with death. David, whose throne God himself had established in whom God had delivered from his adversaries, did not desire the aid of treachery to establish his power. May we be the same. If God has given us something, let us not worry how it comes to us. He will deliver it into our hands. We have no need to be rude, to be um, ruthless, or to secure things that he's given to us. He will deliver it when it's time. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow for our next lesson.